Thanks to our, our panel. Can I give you this? Do you mind? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. You'll notify your watches. Okay. Uh, we knew if Alex was here, we'd probably go a little longer than that. But we're uh, we're really delighted here that we've uh, made some good progress. Uh, I want to have a couple of thank yous, and then I'm having an introduction. First, I uh, do want to thank you all, obviously, for, for being here. Huh? Uh, second, also the C-Speak team okay. who has pulled this uh, event together. And we have a standing room only crowd here behind us all. But I really want to thank uh, the team out there thank from CCP for their good work. I want to get some credit from you guys. Also, uh, you know, we sometimes forget, but I really want to also thank our audiovisual team, the AV team, who's uh, putting this on the worldwide uh, webcast of this, the folks who've served us here in the day. These are the guys who actually really make this stuff go. So we do appreciate all of their contributions as well. Um, it's now my pleasure. We're now, uh, we've, we've gone through that. We're now going to have a number of companies come up and share their long-term plans. And to be our MC for the rest of the afternoon, we're going to, um, I think, really enhance our MC uh, credentials here. Uh, I'm delighted to introduce uh, Shanali Basak from Bloomberg, one of their top reporters, graduate of Bucknell University, for any of the bisons in the, in the, in the audience. But she's really one of the really up-and-coming stars in Bloomberg, and she's going to MC us through the rest of the afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. You're good. Thank you. Yes, thanks. So yeah. something that I found very refreshing already about this conversation, I know a few of you have already brought up Davos, for example. I had gone this year and I had asked a CEO, you know, it seems that when people focus on stakeholder theory, there's a lot of discussion here about climate change, but I don't see equality mentioned much in a year where a lot of people have been talking about inequality. And so the CEO goes, well, there are a lot more women here than usual. And I said, I meant when wealth inequality. So, so it, it, you do see executives here and everybody I cover really struggling with how they define stakeholder theory and how they address it. Here already, we've heard today about people talking about both the environment, wages, and cultures at their company. So we have five presentations ahead of us at the CECP. That will bring us to 36 presentations to date. The idea here is to get all of the S&P involved. And CEOs are asked to share information other than what's on their quarterly calls and to think about risk, strategy, and growth on both ESG and financial metrics. So the first person we have up is the CEO of Active, which works in a very dynamic industry, and that's mobility. They deliver software capabilities, advanced computing, and network architecture that makes mobility work. Kevin Clark is the CEO of Aptiv, and he will be our first speaker. Kevin, thank you. <laughs> Moving forward from one point to the next, the simplest of actions. But in that simplest of actions, Aptiv sees something else a transformational force, a force that brings us together. We are driven by a shared mission, a world that is safer, greener, and more connected, a conviction in a brighter future for mobility, and a passion for solving the toughest challenges standing in the way. With the right people, organized in the right way, rigorous in our execution, and resilient in the face of adversity, with a unique portfolio of solutions perfectly positioned and continuously enhanced through investment and partnership, delivered efficiently and responsibly, and always with an effort to reduce our impact on the environment and improve the many communities we call home. This is our vision for a more sustainable business. We'll get there with our knowledge, adaptiveness, and drive. We'll get there design. So, uh, thank you. Thanks uh, very much for having me here today. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the introductory, introductory video. It's a good way for us to start. So um, we were at CECP last year, so this is our second year in a row. And, and I, I think I'd want to start my presentation really by saying that the Aptive management team really feels like um, we're doing, what we're doing with our business is really at the core of what the CECPS stands for, the whole Strategic Investor Alliance. And as I 
go through the presentation, hopefully you agree with me, but we really think it's, 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 it's perfectly aligned. So at APTA, we really provide sustainable solutions to uh, environmental, other social problems, while at the same time creating long-term value for our customers, for our employees, and for our shareholders. So we'll walk you through a number of, uh, of those proof points. Uh, before, we, before we get started, uh, you're all familiar with this, uh, uh, the Safe Harbor Statement. You know, as you can read on this slide, those statements are based on our view of the world today, and we know tomorrow will be somewhat different. So, so Aptiv. Um, we've been uh, actively transforming Aptiv over the last, I would say, close to 10 years um, to posi position it to have an industry-leading portfolio of advanced solutions that make vehicles more safe, uh, more green, and more connected. Uh, this past year, we had very strong financial performance despite the very weak macro environment, really reflecting the strength of that overall product portfolio as well as the underlying strength of our business model. Our revenues totaled over $14 billion. Um, revenue growth on an adjusted FX basis was up 4% year on year. And importantly, relative to the markets we serve, the, the global automotive market, actually nine points above vehicle production, which is really important. It means our product portfolio is in the areas where you see content growing in the car. And I'll spend some time talking about those areas, but again, it gets back to that safe, green, and connected uh, mission that we have. Um, we translated that revenue growth into very strong earnings and operating cash flow, uh, which we used to invest in the business uh, both organically as well as uh, uh, to make some acquisitions. And today I'm gonna to really expand on how our compelling mission, uh, coupled with our strategy, which again is aligned to the safe, green, and connected megatrends, along with our track record of really solid, solid execution, makes Aptiv uh, a truly sustainable business, which really is our management team's uh, principal objective. So at Aptiv, um, we really envision a world with zero traffic fatalities, cleaner air and connected mobility, and our advanced technologies are, are, are really helping to make this vision a reality. Our, our employees execute our strategy and give us our competitive edge. We have over 160,000 employees globally. Uh, together, uh, the management team and our employee race really embrace APTA's mission to deliver the safe, green, and connected technologies that I talked about that really will enable the future of mobility. Our industry-leading software, hardware, and systems integration capabilities are made possible by, by over 20,000 engineers and scientists, and the democratization of these technologies has the potential to save literally thousands and thousands of lives, reduce carbon emissions, and save the industry billions of dollars in vehicle re repair costs. Um, we believe that a simple and compelling mission attracts talent and increases employee retention, engagement, and consequently, performance. A recent survey by Deloitte confirms the massive difference in employee engagement for companies with a strong mission versus those without a strong mission. And in fact, uh, that translates to over three times. So it's, it's significant. And if you ask any of our employees why they joined Aptiv, the predominant response uh, will be uh, to make the world safer, greener, and more connected. So we have a very, very noble purpose. And we believe our mission appeals equally to those with technical background in our organization as well as those that don't have technical backgrounds. On slide six, uh, well, let me see, go back here. I'm sorry about that, go back. On slide six, we have examples of the technologies we deliver, which help to address our customers' toughest challenges referenced on the prior slide. Um, beginning with safety, our goal is really to enable our customers to build vehicles that again, result in zero traffic fatalities, zero accidents, zero injuries. And, and, and we can help to move the industry closer to that goal by delivering the technologies that we manufacture, the building blocks for active safety systems, such as advanced perception systems, that includes things like radar technology, vision technology, LiDAR technology, ADAS controllers, and the high-speed networks that actually integrate these perception systems. Sensor fusion, which combines multiple sensing, mod sensing mo modalities, so the radar, vision, and LIDAR I talked about, to deliver the absolute most robust and redundant situa situational awareness possible, as well as the ADAS software algorithms that interpret the input from these perception systems and cause the vehicle to respond appropriately. Moving to green, 
We're focused on minimizing the impact of, via, of the vehicle on the environment, providing the high voltage distribution and connection systems that accelerate powertrain electrification, while also significant re, significantly reducing the weight and mass of the vehicle through smarter, more optimized vehicle architectures. And then lastly, we're also helping to deliver the increased connectivity that provides a seam seamless integration between the passenger, the vehicle, and the world around it, including secure gateways, which help send and receive vehicle information through a variety of protocols, including cellular, radio, DSRC, and GPS. These solutions allow you to connect your phone to the vehicle, both wired and wirelessly, and we enable over-the-air updates, which allow the vehicle software and firmware to be updated, updated and improved over the, over the, and enhance the uh, overall vehicle life cycle. But perhaps what is most interesting for us is when you bring these solutions together and they overlap to address multiple challenges. For example, our, our connectivity offering allows us to communicate with other vehicles to improve safety, as well as with infrastructure to improve traffic management and reduce congestion, both of which allow us to reduce CO2 emissions. Now our safe, green, and connected technologies position Aptiv to benefit from significant content opportunities that are in the vehicle, as well as, as well as opens up tremendous new business opportunities, as well as monetization opportunities. We believe that our long-term success as a business and our ability to increase value are directly tied to the successful execution of our strategy. As shown on slide six, our strategy really has three pillars. Um, while we invest in future platforms that shape our business over the long term, such as things like automated driving and data services, we've pursued profitable revenue growth in our current platforms, principally in really high growth areas such as um, high voltage electrification or powertrain electrification, as well as advanced active safety systems. All while constantly identifying ways to strengthen our business foundation, including optimizing our cost structure and significantly diversifying our revenue base. We're focused on delivering flawlessly for our customers each and every single day, having the right portfolio, the right people, and the right processes in place to ensure their success. So that's what our execution really boils down to. Now, looking back at the last five years on slide seven, as you can see, we've been pretty busy. The actions we've taken to put further leverage in our business model, combined with select strategic portfolio actions, have significantly improved Aptus' position to adapt and thrive in a, in a much more challenging environment. Uh, we've completed a number of acquisitions that have increased our global scale and our leverage in, our, in the vehicle architecture, while also expanding our presence in adjacent markets. We've also exited historically low growth, uh, lower value added product lines, and spun off our powertrain segment, creating two very focused companies each much better positioned to address their customers' tough, toughest challenges. And then more recently, uh, we announced a 50-50 joint venture with Hyundai uh, to commercialize automated driving solutions, initially for the mobility on demand market, um, but ultimately for, uh, uh, for consumer applications. And we'd expect that joint venture to close uh, at the end of this quarter. As a result of these portfolio moves, Aptiv's now we believe perfectly positioned as a technology company at the absolute intersection of the disruptive trends in the automotive industry. With a portfolio of technologies that again, make vehicles safer, greener, and more connected and enable the future of mobility. And thanks to our unique position as really the only provider of what we refer, we refer to as both the brain and the nervous system of the vehicle with truly industry leading capabilities in power, in data, in compute and software, all of which are foundational elements for every vehicle architecture solution. We're a partner of choice uh, for, our, for our customers, allowing us to, to deliver for them integrated solutions to problems that most of our competitors are really, quite frankly, not positioned um, to solve. As you can see on slide nine, improvements in our business foundation, that base aspect of our, our underlying strategy, are allowing us to reinvest in new technologies and business models. We believe it extremely important to stay in front of the technology cur curve given the amount of change going on in our industry. Those changes and that reinvestment is accelerating our revenue growth and improving our ability to perform through cycle. So as I mentioned last year we grow more than we grew nine points over vehicle production 
This year we expect to grow seven points over vehicle production, so tremendous growth um, in, 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 in revenues. We have a very strong track record, again, of self-funding incremental engineering investments by both delivering significant operating efficiencies, material cost reduction, manufacturing productivity, and reducing our overhead costs, running a much flatter organization. Our organic and inorganic growth initiatives include investing in additional capacity to support our high growth product lines. I mentioned high voltage uh, electrification as well as uh, uh, advanced active safety solutions. Uh, we've have new business awards over the last couple of years that have totaled 13.2 billion for uh, advanced active safety and 5.6 billion uh, for high voltage elect electrification. So tremendous amount of, of future revenue opportunities. Uh, we continue to develop next generation automated driving algorithms and perception systems, uh, smart vehicle architecture and connected services, all of which are gaining commercial momentum. We're doing that organically. And we've truly established Aptiv as a market leader in engineered components, both, the, both in the automotive market as well as in uh, well-aligned adjacent markets. Through continued discipline reinvestment in our business, we've materially improved our competitive position in current and future platforms, and really by leveraging our cross Aptiv capabilities. I talked about that brain and nervous system, software and hardware cap capabilities. We've established a much wider competitive moat in several advanced technologies across both of our business segments that you see here. Our advanced safety and user experience segment as well as our signal and power solution segment. So the pace of digitization in our industry is accelerating. As you can see on this next slide, the demand for vehicles to be safer, greener, and more connected is absolutely increasing. So this, this chart here reflects our underlying growth. Consumers are demanding safer vehicles and OEMs are responding, driving the increased penetration of active safety systems across their full vehicle lineups from the premium to the value segments. Our scalable ADAS solution is unique in the industry. It's been very successful in the marketplace and has positioned us to be even more competitive in the future. And as a result, we expect our active safety revenues to increase 30% in 2020 and almost double from $1.3 billion in 2019 to more than 2.5 billion in 2022. Moving to high voltage electrification product line in the center of the chart, European and Chinese OEMs literally cannot achieve the new more stringent CO2 targets without the combination of high voltage and battery electric vehicles. Um, and the cost of not, not achieving them is significant, which makes us very confident that by 2022, over 20% of the vehicles produced annually will include an electrified powertrain. Fortunately for Aptiv, the total addressable content per vehicle for the full range of high voltage alternatives is one and a half to two times that of a traditional low voltage vehicle. Our 2019 high voltage electrification revenues total approximately 350 million. That's up almost 40% year over year, making it one of our fastest growing product lines. And we expect high voltage electrification revenues actually to grow 50% uh, in 2020 and to increase more than threefold to over a billion dollars in 2022. Moving to the far right side of the slide, we're expecting, uh, we're expecting continued solid growth in high margin engineer components product lines. Now it's not the growth rate of advanced active safety or high voltage electrification, but it's one of the product areas that effectively enable it and it's one of the technologies that we can bring from our automotive space into adjacent markets. Again, what's driving this is content gains, both from advanced safety and electrification systems, um, as well as in, inorganic contributions. Um, we've made a number of acquisitions in this space to enhance our overall product portfolio, which has translated to not only a stronger position within the automotive space, but it's really allowed us to diversify our non-auto revenues from just under 5% um, five years ago to 15% to, to this year. So significant diversification of revenues which again for us means translating our business into a more sustainable business model, fewer fluctuations in revenue. Moving to capital deployment on slide 11, our sustainable business model enables us to convert more income to cash. And as a result, we're targeting operating cash flow of roughly 2.3 billion and up to 90% free cash flow conversion by 2022. So given the nature of our business, where we've come from, a cash, very cash generative business. 
roughly double digit compounded growth in cash flow. Um, that presents really no shortage of attractive deployment opportuni opportunities, allowing us to continue to invest in our business, both organically uh, as well as through acquisitions. And to the extent we have excess cash uh, available, returning that cash to shareholders. Uh, to put that in perspective, that last point, since 2011, we've returned approximately $7 billion in cash to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases. And we take advantage of uh, small market dislocations to uh, repurchase some amount of stock. In summary, we believe disciplined capital deployment is really a major differentiator for Aptiv, and it's a truly important lever uh, for stakeholder value creation, whether that be with our customers, with our employees, or with our shareholders. We take significant pride in the progress we've made building a stronger, more sustainable business uh, that delivers long-term value to all of our stakeholders, as you can see on slide 12. We believe that our long-term success as a business and our ability to increase shareholder value are the direct result, really is a direct result of the execution of our business strategy, which has been consistent over the last five years, generating significantly faster revenue growth in the market and our peers. And as you can see, our growth in revenue and operating income has been well in excess of our automotive peers, uh, as well as the overall industry, which has translated into significant total shareholder return out performance over the last several years. As you can see on slide 13, our financial framework really aligns with our strategy and mission to build a more sustainable business that's positioned to outperform and, and truly you know, our objective in any environment. As we've already discussed, our efforts to improve through cycle resiliency have included several meaningful portfolio actions since 2015, as well as a continued focus on improving our revenue diversification, strengthening our portfolio of industry leading advanced technologies, and increasing the underlying comp uh, competitiveness and flexibility of our cost structure, all while continuing to invest uh, significant amounts in future growth initiatives and executing our capital deployment strategy. As you can see on slide 14, our culture of continuous improvement is really driven through our people, through our processes, and our portfolio, which again makes Aptiv a much more sustainable business. Uh, beginning with our people, our goal is to attract, to develop, and retain the absolute best talent, and further enhance our strong corporate culture. And I'm proud to say that Aptiv has been recognized as one of the world's most ethical companies by Ethisphere magazine for the eighth straight year reflecting the fact that we've built our business on a foundation of always doing the right thing the right way, which is in our DNA and it's truly, um, it's truly core to our culture. Moving to process, we're constantly improving the resiliency and efficiency of our integrated supply chain from supplier to customer and everything in between, while at the same time delivering new commercial solutions to the market and our customers. And lastly, our product portfolio, our technology portfolio, our ability to anticipate the changes in regulatory standards, which is extremely important, and introduce advanced technologies on a timely, and this is really important for our customers, cost competitive basis will be a significant factor in our ability to remain competitive. And it's an area that we're significantly focused on. We spend roughly 8% of revenues on engineering of that amount, roughly 25% is on development activities continuing to enhance our overall, overall product portfolio so that we can solve our customers' toughest challenge, challenges. Our global engineering and advanced technology development capabilities have really positioned us to meet an in, and in the increasingly stringent demands of our OEM customers, which have been driven by consumer preferences for high technology content, again, as well as regulatory demands for things like reduced CO2 emissions or um, advanced active safety systems. At Aptiv, our employee engagement surveys continue to rank clarity of mission highest among cultural attributes, reinforcing the management team's commitment to enable the future of mobility. So that concept of making the world more safe, green and connected and, and enabling the future of mobility truly resonates with our employees. This chart shows our list of values, which is shown on the left side. These are the underlying principles that unite our diverse organization that operates in 44 countries uh, across the globe. And again, over 160,000 em total employees, over 20,000 salaried employees. This common set of values and behaviors really guides all of our employees on how to operate as one single team and to think and act 
uh, like owners of the business, providing the organizational alignment necessary to execute on our mission and to execute on our strategy. We focus on provide our, providing our employees with holistic incentives, including competitive compensation, personal development opportunities, and exciting career opportunities literally across the globe. As shown on the right side of the slide, ESG has definitely taken hold in our organization. We feel that our mission is perfectly aligned to that. In addition to the annual recognition that I mentioned by Ethosphere Magazine, APT has been included in the Dow Jones Sustainability Indices, the FTSE for Good Index, and the Just U.S. Large Equity ETF, and we're ranked number four um, in that ETF in the auto, autos and parts industry category. When an organization truly lives winning values, it's our view the outcome is a high performance culture, which as we know is strongly aligned with driving stakeholder value. Turning to slide 16, we're continuously investing in Aptus culture to ensure employee engagement. We have regular monthly uh, global leadership calls. We have um, global employee call calls each quarter. Over the last several years, we worked to ensure that we have the right structures in place to drive a much more diverse, winning, and knowledgeable uh, culture. We strongly believe diversity drives innovation, diversity of skills, talent, and experiences, in, ad in addition to diversity in race, culture, ethnic ethnicity, and age. APTIV also actively seeks gender diversity as reflected in our industry-leading workforce and management representation that you can see on this chart. And we're committed to creating a more diverse and winning culture during 2020. It's one of the priorities for each member of the senior leadership team. We're excited to reinforce these values through our International Women's Day celebration this year, as well as other initiatives throughout the year. I mentioned our monthly calls. I mentioned our quarterly uh, global employee calls. So we're constantly working on, um, on communicating these values, sharing stories about how we live these values and driving home um, uh, the appropriate behaviors, and that we recognize that thriving in today's challenging environment requires a very diverse team with the absolute best talent. Uh, at Aptiv, we're focused on maintaining a high performance culture in which management compensation is very closely aligned with creating long-term shareholder value. There's a significant amount of uh, portion of at-risk pay for our most senior leaders, including folks like myself. And we review our pay for performance alignment regularly to ensure that we're consistently making good on our commitments. Our metrics strongly reflect our focus on cash generation, return on capital, and, and increasing returns on net assets. In addition to these two standard financial metrics, we actually overlay what we, re what we refer to as strategic results modifiers that really reflect our successes in meeting non-financial goals that, that truly are related to talent development, diversity, um, culture, and customer service. It's this focus on non-financial goals that's, uh, that's truly driven by our board of directors and extends throughout the senior leadership team um, um, and, and, and down below. And finally, it goes without saying that our long-term compensation is designed to attract, retain, and motivate the talent necessary to deliver on our mission and our strategy, again, to make the world more safe, green, and connected. So up to this point, I've highlighted the role of our safe, green, and connected portfolio and the importance of our diverse and talented workforce in executing our strategy and, and making our vision of the future of mobility truly a reality. In, in addition, elements of our corporate governance system help ensure we maintain our disciplined approach to creating long-term sustainable value, not just for our shareholders, but really for all of our stakeholders. At Aptiv, the relationship between the board of directors and leadership is a very, very strong partnership which encourages a very open dialogue and transparent, critical business reviews. We're fortunate to have Raj Gupta over here, who is the chairman of Aptiv um, and um, the individual that I report to on a, on a regular basis. And we get a high level of board engagement. And it's reflected, quite frankly, I think, in Raj's willingness to take time out of his busy schedule to, to join me here today. Uh, we, Raj and I, and the, the balance of the board work very work closely together to perfectly position our product portfolio, foster our strong culture, and encourage innovation and promote execution of our strategy. Our board of directors is actively engaged on the strategy and assessment of our business. It's something that the management team um, definitely encourages. Encourages throughout the year, our board meetings include deep deep dives into the business, addressing topics such as our business strategy, our product portfolio assessments, 
our advanced technology investments, our commercial strategies, our financial performance and capital deployment, a lot of time spent on talent de development and succession planning, investor and market sentiment, governance and sustainability, and then of course uh, uh, ethics and compliance and other governance matters. And it's together this collaborative environment allows our management team to remain laser focused on, on really delivering on all of our commitments. <laughs> Turning to slide 19, um, we're continuing to execute our strategy and deliver our vision uh, of the company out to 2025. So we maintain a very long-term focus. Then our strategy and our strategic initiatives and our business plans uh, need to, uh, to, to dovetail with that. This vision is really, in our view, the logical extension of our mission and our strategy, which is enabled by our industry-leading competitive position and execution capabilities. Our vision includes a more sustainable business, again, a sustainable business with a more flexible business model, defined by an improved, more predictable growth profile, increased profitability, growing sales faster than cost and converting more income to cash, and additional upside from the disciplined deployment of cash that I mentioned all underpinned by a winning culture, a company that has a low cost of capital and the ability to reinvest in its people, in its processes, and its portfolio to create really significant value for our customers, for employees, and for our shareholders, all of which translates into a company with significant margins of cash flow and over $22 billion of revenue in 2025. So I'll wrap up on uh, slide 20 before we open up for questions. We have a long track record of delivering on our long-term vision and creating superior stakeholder value. So on that chart I saw earlier, since Aptiv, previously Delphi, went public back in uh, 2011. And we believe that our long-term success as a business and our ability to create value are strongly linked to the positive impact we have on our people, on our portfolio, and on our planet. With our ownership mindset and passion for results, you can expect more sustainable outperformance in the years to come. And again, with that, we'll open it up for questions. for a little bit as well for about 10 minutes for questions oh, okay okay right, right, right. I okay that. so how do you participate really in ensuring go. job yeah, security in the view of the rapid automation of the workplace yeah that's a great question and I, I think we're a great example in terms of the technologies that we're introducing and what it means for car and safety in the car I, I would say we can't in our company, given the changes going on, we can't guarantee job security. What we can do is make sure that we train, develop, and provide career opportunities for our employees. So a terrific example, you look at our traditional business in the automotive industry and, 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 and our traditional engineering activities as an example. Um, historically, our industry was, was, was built with mechanical engineering that evolved to electrical engineering that evolved today to software engineers. So I, I mentioned those 20, thousand engineers we have close to seven thousand are software engineers and of those seven thousand software engineers I, I bet the bulk are engineers we've hired over the last five six years so it's how do we continue to hire folks with the right skill set and at the same time how do we make sure we develop those people who have the underlying skill the underlying desire to stay relevant in particular product categories that we operate in are there raw materials that your company uses that will negatively impact the environment? No, not really. We're, um, we're our biggest, two biggest raw materials, um, copper, which goes into wire harnesses that go into vehicles. Um, the second would be resin, which is petroleum-based, which goes into anything plastic that we manufacture. Um, as an industry, the automotive industry, and it's really driven by our customers, um, and especially our, our North American customers are great, but especially our European customers who've been very, very focused on green, on reducing CO2 footprint, uh, on, um, on how do we make sure that we minimize our carbon footprint. So we've been very acti active in that, quite frankly, for more than 10 plus years. And then over the last few years have made significant commitments and significant improvements with respect to our overall carbon footprint. 
So the next one is about gender diversity. Will you reach gender balance in your senior leadership uh, and revenue generating activities? Will we reach it? That's the question. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I th we'll reach it uh, without a doubt. Um, we're not where we need to be now. Uh, we've made tremendous, we've actually always done a reasonably good job up to a point. Now there's a tremendous amount of focus at the senior management level and PL leadership level. How do we get more equity, more balance, more diversity? There? I'll follow up on that while we have it. Okay. As you're hiring engineers, I know hiring women out of engineering programs has been a challenge for many people. How are you finding women? At you know, for us, it's not. Mm -hmm. Actually, our diversity among entry-level engineers is fantastic. I mean, we, 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 lead, we, we, we lead our industry, and we lead most industrials that are out there. And I think part of that aligns with our mission of Safe Green and Connected where we need to do a better job and where our focus is, is how do we keep, keep them out beyond the first roughly seven to eight years of their career? How do we provide whatever's necessary to keep advancing them in terms of career opportunities? And that's the area where when you think about our area of focus in terms of change and adjustment, it's really there. Do we have any questions from the audience? Maybe let's start all the way back there. Um, my, my name is Tony Berkeley. I'm with Prudential Financial Incorporated. Um, I'm okay. part of the impact investing team. And so we invest a portion of the corporate account in positively impactful companies and projects. And mm -hmm. our CEO, Charlie Lowry, was at the Board of Boards and hopefully you had a chance to engage with him. Um, I was also in attendance at the September 2017 CEO Investor Forum, where I believe you made, I, did. I think, the first of your long term. Uh, plan presentations. I um, was also here last winter uh, when you made the second one and I'm here today for the third. And so I looked back over my Twitter account at my tweets <laughs> and I actually tweeted out on all your presentations. In the first one, I noted that, wow, Delphi, Adaptive facing uh, a lot of uncertainties in their markets and um, CEO uh, Kevin Clark out here to talk about the future. My tweet from last winter was, wow, looks like the uh, uh, long-term plan has really come together for adaptive and that you are um, uh, articulated a pretty clear value proposition going forward. And this time I'm looking at your presentation and, and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by it. Um, you've really taken it to that next level of tying together the sustainable and ESG elements with a, a very coherent plan for the core operations and uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, revenue generating portions of your business. So just want to acknowledge that. I think it's Thank an extraordinary uh, two and a half years of uh, transformative leadership on your part. And mindful of the CEOs in the room, I'm just curious what um, lessons you could share around building a management team around you and your board leadership that can really carry this sustainably, uh, sustainable value proposition forward that's more at that senior leadership level um, and what positive negative lessons you've, uh, yeah. you've uh, picked up in that um, process. That's a great question. I um, mean, and thank you for your, your, your comment. Uh, for us, in terms of how to execute it, I, I think board management team alignment and engagement is absolutely important. It's absolutely critical. I, I couldn't do it without Raj and Raj's support and quite frankly, um, his constructive calibrations periodically. So I think it starts there. For me, um, you know, all these underlying aspects, it's, it's really about building a better business. And, and as CEOs, I think it's incumbent upon us to be very, very focused on how do we build, and we, we use the term sustainable, you know, more sustainable business. There are other words that could be used, but it's how do we build a stronger business to serve our customers that translates to value that can only be done through employee engagement. It's the only way it can be done. And when you think about things like um, uh, diversity, whether it's gender diversity or it's racial diversity, how do you not do that without tapping the absolute largest pool of resources that you can tap? Right? And how do you identify those, those areas that you need to make adjustments or calibrate to ensure that you as a company are attractive? And I think all of us, I mean, I think all of us that operate in industrials today, there are huge aspects of our businesses that are opportunities about making life better for individuals each, each and every day. Um, I'm fortunate my predecessor started on the path of how do we bring a product portfolio that's more safe, green, connected, the board, endorsed that and supported it significantly. So how do we save lives? How do we reduce CO2 emissions? How do we create a better consumer experience? Um, 
that's powerful and that's something that we work real hard to, as an organization to, to really come together and leverage. Okay. Do you have any more questions from the audience? Gentlemen, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying I keep saying them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to echo the comment. I was here for the three presentations and I want to praise CECP for making this an ongoing dialogue where we can see people like you making the pivots and the growth. So I would want to start with two things. About uh, two and a half years ago, I invested in Aptiv, and it's been a good investment. And second, um, I decided um, to try and benchmark you across the Fortune 500. So I'm a founder of a management consulting firm, Bruce Piasecki, and the author of the book, World Inc. Mm -hmm. So are your four top peers competing for technical talent in the Fortune 500? UTC, Lockheed Martin, Flex, and Applied Materials, because they seem to need a lot of EEs and a lot of software engineers as much as you. Or are there others that you're competing against? Yeah, I, I think I would include those among, uh, among the pool of, of, of resources. Um, engineers in our space, software engineers are engineers that want to go into social media, something like that. That's, that's not our space, that's not where we play, and quite frankly, that's, that's not the, uh, the individual we're gonna get. Um, having said that, we feel like given the immediate impact that we're having on the world today, we have a fleet of over 100 vehicles that are in Las Vegas that are, are plugged into a lift network. Um, I ask any of you who get out there to, to look, hopefully take a ride on them, that are level four autonomous vehicles. Now, there's a driver in there just for safety reasons at this point in time, but, but we have real applications of technology today. So the young man, the young woman, uh, or the you know, older man or older woman who's really interested on executing on things today and seeing it progress over the next 10 or 20 years, we feel like we're perfectly positioned to do that. And again, to date, we've really not run into a constraint in terms of getting the talent we need to compete. Yeah, I haven't, less with those four, more with our traditional um, uh, companies, which probably is a mistake, probably should have a broader, kind of a broader focus. I want to take one um, from our viewers watching remotely as well. Under your leadership, Aptiv seems to be a very purpose-driven company. What cultural value do you attribute to this? Um, I, listen, I, I think under my leadership, I think it started with my predecessor, Rodney O'Neill. I think it started with the board before I became the CEO with Raj and, 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 and his folks. So I, I, I need to start with that. Um, I think time has given us the benefit of momentum. Um, I think as we've, probably the world has changed more rapidly over the past, last five years in our need to transform has changed more rapidly. Um, that's translated into incremental import, importance of culture and communication. I'd say there's probably more waiting on that than what we've had before in terms of the amount of changes that we've had to make and the direction we had to go in. And again, I, I, when you look at your employee base, when you look at wanting to build a sustainable business, purpose is hugely important, right? It's one of the big things that, that um, employees it's one of the things that they value, and the reality is really top-notch talent, really any talent, has a number of choices and a number of options, and how do you make sure that you differentiate yourself, and you do it in a real, a true, a, true, a real way, right? It's gotta be more than words. It's gotta be how you behave, how you act, how you reward people, so. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us, appreciate it. Thank you.